All right, welcome to Longview Presbyterian Church. We're going to be getting started with our prelude now. So, Andy, take it away. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I'm Pastor Liz, and with me is Pastor Dexter, and we want to welcome you this morning to Longview Presbyterian Church as we continue to worship safely online. We're a community of faith that is seeking Christ's way and welcoming all people, and we are so glad that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. Uh, we will be celebrating communion together today, so this is a great time to get something to eat and something to drink. It can be whatever you have on hand, um, your bagel and your morning coffee, whatever you've already got at the house uh, to join us in this time. That'll be later in the service, but now is a great moment to get that stuff before you so that you're ready to go. We plan to have a fellowship Zoom gathering this week for everyone to stay connected to our church family. That'll be Tuesday at 7 p.m. It's a time to check in with each other and have a time of fellowship and a time of community prayer. So that'll be this Tuesday, 7 p.m., same Zoom link you are using this morning. Uh, we can't wait to see you there. We'd invite you a week from today, next Sunday, to join Hagar's Community Church and Abolition Apostles for a time of learning about how to become a prison pen pal. Um, again, this will be next Sunday, February 13th at 6 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, this is a way for you to join with uh, our partners at Hagar's Community Church to directly communicate and build a relationship with a person who is incarcerated inside the Washington Correction Center for Women in a time when other volunteers are not allowed to go inside because of the COVID lockdown. Um, you can write letters from your kitchen table. It's a wonderful way that you can connect to this ministry and be in solidarity with our siblings who are on the inside. Um, we're going to send out a reminder email tomorrow with the special registration link. Um, it is, uh, it's not the same Zoom link for that event as you're using this morning. It's going to be a special one that if you register using that link, it will come to your inbox and you'll be ready for next Sunday evening. So we really hope to see you there. Again, this is a great way to connect with folks on the inside right now and support this ministry in a time when there are very few tangible ways to be in solidarity. So we hope you'll join us for that time. 
Um, and let's go ahead and get our call to worship on the screen as we welcome Blake and Medora to lead us in the call to worship. You want your cell phone here? Okay. All oh, you brokenhearted and bereaved, you joyful and well rested, you overwhelmed and overworked, come. All you disappointed and desperate, you, you playful and delighted, you angry and over it, come. No matter what the weather of our hearts, this day is sacred. Let us worship God, love that never ceases. I now invite you to sing along with our opening hymn, number 694, Great God of Every Blessing. Not sure if you're seeing this on your end, but there are giant boxes in the 
Google Slides. Oh yeah, we you know we're we're working on that. Um, thanks for letting us know though, Blake. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, I'm just working to pin y'all on the screen, so just give me a minute here. We appreciate everyone's patience today with the technology. It's always an adventure when we're on Zoom, together, isn't it? Just like consume the screen. Okay, here we go. Let it go. Add pin. There you go. Thanks. All right, give me a second so we can all be on the screen together. Here we go. Okay, here we are. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hello, hello. Welcome to Kids Time. So today, I'm going to tell you a story about what happened when Jesus went fishing, okay? So here we go. It was a bright, sunny day. Nothing like today outside. Okay. The sun was out. It was beautiful outside. Jesus was at a beautiful lake surrounded by lots of people who were with him. There were so many people with Jesus that Jesus was running out of space to stand uh, because everyone was so excited to hear Jesus teaching about God's love. So as Jesus was looking around, trying to figure out where to stand with all the people around, he noticed that there were two boats out on the water. The people, the fisher people on the boats had been out fishing and had come back and they were washing their fishing nets so that they could be ready next time they wanted to go out and go fishing. Mm -hmm. So as Jesus was thinking, well, I'm running out of space on the land on the edge of the lake to stand, he looked at the boats and, and got an idea that maybe he could get inside the boat and have a little more space so he could keep teaching the people. So Jesus got into one of those boats, belonged to a man named Simon, who was also called Peter. Would you row me out just a little bit from the shore? Jesus asked him. It looked like a good place to keep teaching that wasn't so crowded. When Simon did this, Jesus sat in the boat and kept teaching the people. He taught them about God's love for everyone. And when Jesus was done teaching, he turned to Simon, who was in the boat with him, and he said, Row out into the deep water and let down your nets so that you can catch some fish. Now, Simon had just gotten back from a very long night of fishing and he had not caught one single fish. He said, we have been out all night and we didn't catch anything, but if you say so, I will put my nets in the water again. <laughs> so even though it really seemed to Simon that Jesus didn't know anything about fishing, there was something <laughs> exciting about Jesus and the things he was teaching about God. So Simon and his other fishing friends let their nets down into the deep water. And then all of a sudden their nets got so full of fish that they could barely pull all the fish into the boat. The <laughs> nets were so full that they had to call their friends in another boat to row over and help them get it on because that's that was how many fish that they brought in okay so when simon saw all of this he was amazed and kind of overwhelmed he fell on his knees in front of jesus and he said go away from me for i'm no good simon peter jesus says do not be afraid from now on you'll be catching people not fish. <laughs> James and John, who were Simon's fishing buddies, also saw this huge catch of fish and they were also amazed. So as soon as the two boats loaded with fish got to the shore, Simon, James, and John, they left everything that they had and they went with Jesus to follow him. All right, Blake, do you know what time it is? Time for a repeat after me prayer. Repeat after me prayer. At 10 15. <laughs> At 10 15. Yes. Thank you for reminding me that when I ask you what time it is, you're going to be absolutely on the ball with reminding me. <laughs> okay. Let's pray together. God, we will listen. 
God, we will listen to Jesus teaching, to Jesus teaching, and we will follow him too. And we will follow him too. With your help. With your help. Amen. Amen. All right, Blake, thanks so much for joining us for this time today. We'll see you later. <laughs> Beloved, let us turn in this time to the most holy one and confess our sin, confident in God's faithful and steadfast love for us. We begin our time of confession by speaking aloud together the reality that we worship on land white settlers stole from our indigenous siblings. In our opening hymn, we sang about a spirit that teaches us, guides us, transforming broken people into the holy church, the hymn said. And that's what's happening in this moment. We name the brokenness that is colonization, which white folks and churches like ours still benefit from today. And we entrust ourselves to the spirit who promises to transform us into the kind of people who will walk in a new direction, a direction of solidarity with indigenous folks towards a future where everyone, plants, animals, humans alike, can thrive. We'd invite you now to read along or listen. Uh, to, it looks like we're having a little bit of screen issues today. So go ahead and listen to this land acknowledgement that we received from the Calitz Indian tribe. It is vital well, to, to honor, honor those, those who came, came before us, us and, and acknowledge the long history of what is now Southwest, Southwest Washington State. State. This area has been home to ancestors of the Cowlitz Indian tribe for thousands of years. The land with its rich resources enabled the Cowlitz people to flourish and they stewarded the land with their traditional culture. Today, we must appreciate the persistence of the Cowlitz people and the important role they play in our region as together we steward the land for all our descendants. We continue our confession time, trusting in the mercy of God to make us whole. So let's go now to our continued prayer of confession. God of the universe and creator of all that is, we admit that we fail to be honest about our lives and in the politics of life. Sometimes we are deceitful, other, Other times, times we judge ourselves harshly and feel unworthy of your call on our lives. Touch us with your grace and dispel our fear that we may arise with renewed spirits to serve you, our true sovereign. Amen. People of God, the promise is this. God is faithful and steadfast eager to forgive our sins and to welcome us back home. Mm. Grateful for this promise of joy and peace. In this moment, let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Uh, in this time, we'd invite you to join us in passing the peace of Christ to each other. You can do that verbally by unmuting, or you can do it with sign language, and I'll show you how to do that. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. You can unmute and pass the piece of Christ oh, to each other. Peace be with you. 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 Peace be with I'm a rookie boy. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. Leg the pizza Christ be with you all. And hey. you too, hey. Cynthia. Hey. Amen. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining in that passing of the peace. Um, we'll now get the prayer for illumination up on the screen as Blake and Medora lead us in the prayer for illumination and the first reading of scripture. God of steadfast love and faithfulness, by the power of your Holy Spirit, Help us to hear your word with understanding that in our speech and actions we may exalt your name. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. And our first reading this morning comes from Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from the gospel according to Luke, the fifth chapter, beginning in verse one. Listen to what Jesus is up to. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. <clears throat> and they came and filled both boats. So they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First, a history lesson. Simon Peter, James, and John were all fishermen. And while this might seem like a nice small business owned by some middle-class folks, this probably wasn't historically accurate. The fishing industry in Roman-occupied Israel appears to have been highly, highly regulated. If you wanted to catch fish, there were a number of bureaucratic hoops you had to jump through. 
you had to purchase your fishing rights, pay high taxes, and then the shipping tolls to get the fish all around the country. Then these fish would be sent to the wealthy ruling families to enjoy, to enjoy barely leaving any for you and your family. Fishing at that time might be similar to lift drivers today. It might seem like lift drivers have all this autonomy, have their own business, and are free to do as they see fit. But instead, they end up giving large portions of their income to the big business. So fishers were often left to barely make ends meet. Sometimes they would even be facing serious debts that they could never really get out of with this fishing industry. And of course, we also know that Jesus was a carpenter, right? But this might be a little deceptive as well. Today, we often think of a carpenter as someone who is a skilled artisan. But once again, 2,000 years of time makes quite a difference. The word for carpenter in Greek is a tekton, and it's more closely related to perhaps a day laborer looking for construction work at Home Depot. Now, if you are like me, this is probably a little different from some of the stories we learned growing up about these successful uh, business folks. But these are important facts for us to see that and to understand this story, because when we know this, we see that these fishermen spend all night fishing and get no fish. They are truly desperate. And then Jesus comes in knowing exactly what it means to miss a day's work, to miss a day's pay. Second, an economics lesson. Peter and his friends had worked all night and caught no fish. That full night shift, but no income or even any food to show for it. How severe was this going to be for Peter, James, and John and the people that they were providing for? What other jobs would they have to work this week to survive? And it is into this uncertain economic situation caused by unfair economic conditions that Jesus shows up this morning. It is into these desperate situations in our world and in our lives created by oppressive systems that Jesus appears. Throw your nets to the other side, Jesus tells these weary fishermen. Now, maybe it was the wonderful teaching that Jesus was doing. Maybe it was the fact that he looked like a day worker too. Or maybe they were just too tired to fight. And so they did some more fishing. They threw their nets in. And bam! Just like that, more fish than they could even handle. And while they were facing the metaphorical sinking boats of economic conditions, their literal boats started to sink with abundance. Jesus shows those fishermen and that crowd the source of abundance that the earth provides and shares with us. In contrast to the economic systems that say, there is not enough for everyone, and to hoard all that you can, Jesus shows an abundance of resources that would be enough to support everyone. In contrast to the wealthy few owning and controlling the majority of resources, Jesus shows a world that is free to everyone, filled with good things for nourishment. Jesus introduces to these fishermen and the crowds a new economic system where everyone has enough. And this is not a prosperity gospel message that if you love Jesus, you will get rich. But rather, this is the gospel of abundance and creation. This world has enough for all. The question is, do we have enough or do we have more than enough? So when Jesus calls them to follow him, to go and catch people, as he puts it, perhaps they decide to follow because they know that the system they are currently in is rigged against them. Perhaps these fishermen gave up being a part of those oppressive systems that they're working under and opted instead to try out this Jesus person's abundant economy, an economy where all could thrive. Third, a community lesson. The author of this gospel, Luke, uses an interesting word at the end of this passage when describing Peter's friends and work partners. 
Luke uses the Greek word koinonoi, and this is often translated as partners, but it has the sense of something a little deeper, like um, cooperative members. And we're not given more insight into these fishermen's business model, but this word indicates that they were somehow already working together, sharing the risk and reward of their business, relying on one another for success and for safety. And you might have noticed that the word for co-op members, koinonoi, is eerily similar to koinonia, which is the Greek word used to describe the early churches. This might give us some insight into the community that Jesus was building, a cooperative community that shares in the risks and in the rewards, shares the joys and the griefs, each person coming together in this fellowship, both economically and spiritually. What would it look like to share the material wealth of the church with all in our communities? And we know the early church took Jesus's new economic system for all seriously. Uh, in Acts 7, we see that the widows were not being treated fairly. So they created the world's first deacons fund, a way to provide for the needs of all the community members. And just last week, we heard at our annual meeting about how our deacons fund is being reimagined. This last year, the deacons were called upon in a bigger way than ever before. In the face of multiple crises throughout our world's systems that are just not designed for the thriving of all. The deacons stepped up to face these challenges head on. In the report, we heard that the deacons gave out 45 disperse, disbursements in 2021, which was more than both 2019 and 2020 combined. Our deacon treasurer remarked, we were able to disperse $21,355.95 to our community this year. And the money never ran out. The purpose of the Deacons Fund is to provide financial assistance in times of hardship by, by following the apostles example of redistributing wealth and supporting the disenfranchised. Like those fishermen, like that early church, we are starting to believe more and more in this new economy that says each and every person deserves to be loved, safe, and healthy. How can we continue to build this new world based on the abundance of God instead of the scarcity of greed? What would it mean for our church to build upon the work of the deacons to make every space we are in one of sharing and abundance? Can we share the good news of seas filled with fish that are not controlled and owned for the few, but should be shared with the many? Would you like to join God's cooperative community? As we ponder these questions, I invite you to sing a song of abundance of God with our responding hymn, number 649, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, uh, which we'll put up on the screen here for you.
time of worship with a time of community prayer, sharing our joys and concerns through the chat function, which is open now for you to share any prayers that are on your heart that you want shared in this space. And we thank you to those of you who were able to send your prayer requests to us in advance, which we have woven into the prayers for the day. At the end of each prayer that we lift up, one of the pastors will say, God and your grace, and together, all of us are invited to respond from our homes. You receive our, our prayers, prayers, O God. God. We'll end our prayer time with a prayer of held silence, a time when we know God is receiving those prayers that are too intimate to be shared aloud in this public space. People of God, let us pray. We first pray during our 50th year, a prayer for the way our church has supported the COVID-19 vaccination effort over the last uh, year or so. We give you thanks for the vaccine PSA that, Pastor, that Pastor Liz provided to our state. And we celebrate the vaccine clinic that our church helps support with Molina Healthcare and Mint Valley Elementary. We know, O oh God, that you work through scientists to continue to care for us and all of creation. And we ask that in the midst of this ongoing pandemic, that you would protect people with this vaccine and watch over all your children. God, in your grace, you, you receive, receive our, our prayers, O oh God. God. We also pray this morning for a member of our church, Jeannie Olander whose girlfriend, Julie, is having a big surgery tomorrow. We pray, healing God, that Julie's surgery will go very smoothly and that it will lead her towards healing. And we also pray that you would reduce Julie's anxiety leading up to the surgery, that Julie would feel wrapped up in your peace as she approaches this big day. God, in your grace, you, you receive, receive our, our prayers, prayers, O God. God. We pray alongside Robert and Gary, a prayer that the efforts to lift up the unhoused in our community will continue to make progress and not fall into further neglect. Holy One, um, as the Poor People's Campaign gathers on Wednesday to, to hear the county commissioners talk about potential encampment and to share their voices, we ask that all the work that is being done for those um, 
living without homes, uh, uh, love overwhelming, uh, Salvation Army, Family Promise, Community House, um, all the different organizations, CAP, that you would be um, working through them um, and with them to be providing safety and care for your children. God, in your grace, you receive, receive our, our prayers, prayers, oh God. And the chat is open now if you have any prayers you'd like to add. We pray with Jorge, prays for, prayers for him and his wife, Veronica. Their lungs are not doing well and they are getting some tests. Mm -hmm. Healing God, we lift up Jorge and Veronica and we ask that... Um, the medical team who's going to be looking at what is happening in their lungs would have wisdom and clarity about what's going on, that they would have a clear path forward for treatment that would bring full healing and recovery. God, in your grace, you, you receive, receive our, our prayers, prayers, oh God. And we hold now a prayer of silence knowing that God has open heart and open hands to receive even the deepest cries of our hearts. Mm -hmm. God, in your grace, you, you receive, receive our prayers, prayers, oh God. We continue in prayer, praying to our parenting God, mother and father of us all, just as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We invite you now to sing along with our next song, What Does the Lord Require of You? What does the Lord We are each other's harvest. We are each other's business. We are each other's magnitude and bond. These words from the American poet Gwendolyn Brooks talk about how we belong to one another. In the spirit of belonging and bond, let us bring forth our offerings. If you would like to continue giving financially during this season, you can mail your checks made out to Longview Presbyterian Church to P.O. Box 1613 in Longview, or you can give online. All the details are available on our website, longviewpress.org giving. On the first Sunday of the month, we always invite folks to make a special gift to our Deacons Fund if they feel so inclined. Some of this money stays with our congregation to support our members and friends in times of financial crisis. And some of it goes to the Emergency Needs Grant held by Love, Inc. and distributed by Love Overwhelming, which provides for the emergency needs of folks all throughout our community. 
This past month, the Emergency Needs Grant assisted one family with deposit assistance for a permanent home together. This family had been separated and each with each child staying with a different family member. They finally found a home where they could be together again. Uh, this, also, this money also helped one family with the cremation of their service animal. And it also assisted another family with a deposit for a permanent home. You can give to the Deacon's Fund by putting Deacon's Fund in your memo line uh, of your check, or you can, um, when you, if you give online through our website, there's a drop down menu that allows you to click Longview Presbyterian Deacon's Fund. Thank you for making this life affirming, abundant economy work possible through your generous donations. We also want to remind our whole church family during this time that the Deacon's Fund is here for you. We know, especially in this season of added financial stress, um, it can be so difficult. And we want you to know that the Deacon's Fund is one way our church family wants to show tangible support. So if you are in need of any financial assistance, no matter how big or how small, uh, please contact Pastor Liz. Her email is liz at longviewpress.org, or you can call us on the Pastoral Care Emergency Line 360 358 Five seven six five. Our church family would love to come alongside you. We invite you now to consider all the gifts you've given this week as we enjoy an offertory from our church musician, Teresa Marks. Radical wisdom. Amidst popular talk about self-actualization, we ask that our offerings be blessed to the work of communal actualization, that we might celebrate the flourishing of our neighbor as we would celebrate a bountiful harvest. Bless the care we offer one another 
through time and intention. Amen. As we all gather whatever we have to eat and drink for the Feast of Communion before us, uh, we are going to sing our communion hymn, number 507, Come to the Table of Grace. for worship of our denomination, the Presbyterian Church USA, tells us that when we gather for the Lord's Supper, the Spirit draws us into Christ's presence and unites with the church in every time and place. In this time of feast that we share over the spaces between us, we invite you to join us in lifting the food when we lift up the food on the screen and also lifting up whatever you have to drink when we do the same. It'll be one way that we can sit at table together in this virtual space. Join me now as we prepare to share this meal together using the words we're so accustomed to saying together that you'll see on your screen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Join your hearts with mine in prayer. In that time when there was only you, you walked in the midst of chaos, shaping all that is good and beautiful. In that place where there was only your love, you stretched out your hands, scooping up the dirt off earth's floors, shaping us in your image, breathing spirit into our lungs. In that silence where there was only your hope, you called us to be your people, O wonderful God. But seductions sang to us. Sin called us to follow its despair. Death blinded us to the life you offered. 
And so, pouting and stamping our feet because you would not give us our way, we turned away, going down another path. You would not pay attention to our foolish tantrums, nor would you leave us in the grasp of death and sin, trusting that if we encountered the grace wrapped in your holiness, we would turn to you in joy. Holy are you, sanctuary of our hearts, and blessed is Jesus Christ, word of joyous grace. In that time when we had lost our way, Jesus called to us so that we would follow him into joy. In that time when all hope had died, Jesus touched our lips with the bright fire of divine love. In that time when death's cold grip wrapped tightly around our hearts, Jesus came to surround us with your love. In this time of silence, Spirit of God, may this food which is broken become our wholeness. In this time of grace, may this cup, which is poured out, touch our lips with healing. In this time, may we believe that your justice and peace are to be shared with all people, that our hearts can share the burdens of others, that we may bring joy to the lonely and the suffering. And then when our journey is ended and we have followed you into eternity, we will gather around your table in that silence, which is only your grace, in that place, which is only your heart, in that time, which is only your love. God in community, holy in one. Amen. Amen. If you haven't already, this is a good time to put your screen into gallery view because we are gathered together at one table, even across the distances, and we can see each other from across the table. Beloved, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They'll come from east and west and north and south and somehow from their landlines and their iPads and their desktop computers and their iPhones to sit here at the table of God's family. Our Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread because it was what he had handy. So we invite you to take whatever food you have handy. And Jesus gave thanks to God and then broke it. He then handed it to his disciples, his friends, saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I invite you now to partake of the food saying the bread of life. Liz, this is the bread of life. It's good to go. Sister, this is the bread of life. In the same way, Jesus took what he had to drink on the table, the cup. Jesus said to them, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Every time you drink from this cup, do so remembering me. We invite you now to share with each other whatever you have to drink, saying to one another, the cup of salvation. Dexter, this is the cup of salvation. Thanks be to God. Liz, this is the cup of salvation. Friends, whenever we eat and drink at this table together, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Join your hearts with mine in prayer. 
We give you thanks and praise, O God, for the presence of Christ in this place and the teaching and the fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayers. Be our comfort, O God, taking on our burdens and making them light and give our souls rest. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We invite you now to join us in our sending hymn, hymn number 726. If you have a hymnal, will you come and follow me? Thank you so much for joining us at Longview Presbyterian Church as we worship in this online space where all are welcome. Don't forget to join us on Zoom Tuesday at 7 p.m. for fellowship and prayer, accessible by the very same Zoom link you used this morning to join worship and receive us benediction. Listen for the gentle ushering of the Spirit. Go forth, all you beautiful beings, doing your best to get by. Feel the assurance of cosmic love in your life. Rest, play, mourn, rattle the cages of oppression. Let your full humanity be an offering. For God goes with us and within us. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the abundant love of God, and the friendship and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us wherever we go. Amen. Amen. Today's postlude is brought to us by our church musician, Teresa Marks. Um, if you stick around after the postlude, we'll make sure to break you up into small groups so you can catch up with each other about life, get to know new people, and spend some time in fellowship. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs>